once you have uh, this table completed, you go back and uh, you would see here the boxes now start becoming blue. It means that these boxes would actually give you results. So um, these are now uh, our results and the um, default values that are being used by the calculations. This one is on the fatality reduction um, projections um, based on the sustainable mobility project. So uh, if nothing is done, um, these are some of the growth rates or how do you say this growth patterns in terms of the um, fatalities and deaths in different regions of the world. And we're taking some of the values there in calculating the, the increase in fatalities and um, accidents for the calculation process. Now, here we have the results. And first of all, uh, you can view the ridership and trip estimates uh, per mode. Again, if you've inputted some values in the BRT scorecard, the, the, the ridership would be affected. Um, there would be a, a bonus factor that would be taken in. But otherwise, you would get this summary uh, in terms of the ridership per day, in terms of how much of the trips would actually go to the different modes, and the summary of the percentages, which would actually equal to the, the values that you've started with because we didn't adjust it. And um, yeah, let me go back. This one is the summary of the indicators for the project. Now, let me just give you a quick rundown of what's in here so you'd have so very summarized tables in terms of the ridership, co-benefits, financial indicators, uh, so missed something here. Let's uh, look at that later. Uh, emission savings, um, the vehicle kilometers traveled, and graphs on PM emissions, NOx emissions, CO2 emissions, and the like, uh, emission savings through the mode shift. We have the uh, uh, graphs here in the fatalities, injuries, hours saved, fuel savings. We'll run through these later on in detail. Uh, fuel savings um, and the summaries for the costs and the savings. This one is for construction, I think. Uh, you can revise that form later. Um, so you have here in the um, final indicator sheet had the ridership uh, values mil million per year. It's just adjusted. You have some financial indicators. As you can see, we're getting negative 14 here. Oops. I'm suspecting that this is due to the low, very low ridership assumptions that uh, we've inputted and there might be a need to review that later. So it gives you an idea of how, you know, uh, what is actual legwork that you would need to be able to review and come up with um, more robust calculations. Right now we're seeing that uh, the economic IRR and the MPV are not getting good values. But uh, let's see the other, um, Let's see the other factors. These are actually independent of the, um, the financial indicators here. And we're seeing that the project is leading towards positive reductions in terms of vehicle kilometers traveled, which is what we actually want. We want to reduce the numbers of vehicles on the road and shift the people from private modes into the BRT system. Um, we've calculated the uh, travel time savings based on the difference of the BRT and the other modes. And based on the reduction in the uh, vehicle kilometers traveled, we have estimated the numbers of reductions in terms of fatalities and um, in terms of injuries or non-fatal accidents. 
uh, since there is a positive relation between vehicle kilometers traveled and the occurrences of accidents both fatal and non-fatal. So these are um, showing reasonable values here. In terms of the fuel savings, um, you have here 65 million for the 20-year um, uh, project uh, span that we've analyzed. And uh, in terms of the emissions reductions, um, 4.2 million for the total span of time that we've analyzed. And here we have the emission savings in terms of total tons. In terms of ton per kilometer reduction. And in terms of ton per kilometer per year. And in here we've added uh, the amount per year. So it's uh, something around 3,700 tons CO2 per year reduction. Now you can check these values. If these are reasonable, you can go to this sheet here, CO2 per kilometer per C per PAX uh, sheet. This uh, sheet contains um, some indicators from the different BRT systems um, that have quantified their emissions reductions um, in terms of CO2. And uh, you can actually check the data whether you're, what you're getting or not extremely way off the range that's being given here. You can uh, see here that uh, the range is, you know, from, uh, for example, 184 is the minimum, going towards a maximum of, uh, you know, a high of uh, around 4,000 or, or even 11,000 for um, ton CO2 per kilometer. Um, it, these are reflective of the characteristics of the PRT. Uh, in terms of the, the the size of the BRT, the the quality of the BRT, the kind of ridership that it gets, the kind of mode shift that it gets, what types of vehicles that it attracts um, trips from, so you get this uh, range of different factors or different uh, results. But nonetheless, um, you can see whether what you're getting are actually more or less uh, reasonable. So right now, um, we're getting around uh, 1,184, example, tons per kilometer. And uh, if you look at this value here, this is actually 2,200. So we're below that, probably because of the, the low ridership that we're assumed, but uh, we're not um, unreasonably way off. So at least the calculations, the assumptions that we have made are uh, proving to be a little bit uh, reasonable, but uh, nonetheless a lot of um, further improvements can be done. Sorry. And uh, just to show you some of the graphs here, so this would give you the vehicle kilometers traveled. Um, the one in dotted lines is the uh, VKM of the BRT. So this is the project scenario. And the solid shapes here are the vehicle kilometers cumulative for the other modes if the project was not put in place. So you would see this huge difference in terms of um, vehicle kilometers. And it gives you an idea how much um, the gravity in terms of the infrastructure needs to hold these additional vehicles if the BRT was not um, put in place. And we have a similar graph for PM, uh, particulate matter. For this one, you can see that it's uh, going down, even the baseline, so the solid ones are the baseline, going down throughout time due to the assumption that the vehicle fleet would actually move towards uh, cleaner composition. If you remember, we assume that um, pre-Euro will be significantly reduced in the future and uh, the fleet 
composition would move towards higher euro standards, euro 2, euro 3. And so, even in the baseline, you would have significant reductions, but compared to the VRT, um, it's still high. So we get positive savings in terms of PM and uh, as well as NOx. Okay, so this one is uh, for CO2. So we're taking into account the, the CO2 emissions from the project buses as well as distributed the uh, emissions from the uh, construction. Um, okay, so we have some values here for the reduction in uh, fatalities and injuries and the number of hours saved by implementing the project due to the reduction in vehicle kilometers and the improvement in speed. Now here, you would get a fuel savings chart, including diesel and petrol for the whole scenario. So you have negative here for the uh, diesel because diesel is what is actually being consumed by the project. But uh, if you total the um, fuel savings, it would still lead to significant um, fuel savings in volume in uh, the whole span of the analysis. Uh, same thing with the um, monetized value. So you would see here a dotted line for the total. This is just a subtraction of the savings, or this one, this is the blue one, this is the petrol, minus the savings, or minus the consumption of the diesel fuel as it's being consumed by the BRD buses. Okay, so this one would give you the, um, the distribution of the savings in terms of US dollars, in terms of the different factors like the emissions, uh, values uh, monetized, uh, fatalities, injuries, travel time, uh, fuel savings and even maintenance. Okay. Um, okay. This one uh, we need to check the uh, the construction values. We're just taking um, per kilometer construction values from another project, and uh, we need to review that and get uh, local data for the total costs once the total BRT project is completed. And uh, it should actually, yeah, as you can see here, due to the high assumption in the construction costs, we're um, getting negative values here for the uh, total cost versus savings. Ideally, you would get something like an upward curve here that would lead to positive savings anytime between the fifth or the tenth year. Uh, normally, that's what we're getting for the more economically viable projects. Um, again, we need to review the values for the project construction costs. Okay, so at the end of the indicator sheet here, you would get a final calculation sheet, um, which would link to the graphs that you would see upstairs. But the main calculation sheet is actually here. This is called the calculations uh, sheet and it contains um, all the linked calculations that connects the input sheet to the output sheet and all the growth rates and assumptions that were used in coming up with the, the trip values for each year um, distributing the the trip lengths and uh, the VKM into the different modes. As you can see here, let me just zoom it a bit. Um, distribution in terms of the different vehicles. Okay, for the VKT. 
um, in terms of the calculations and the adjustments for the fuel efficiencies, speed curves that were used for the different modes. And what are the resulting speed uh, consumption impacts in terms of fuel efficiency, PM NOx, uh, and the final emission factors that were derived using the uh, input data that was given by the users and the adjusted values as you can see here. Okay. All the relevant calculations are within the sheet. Um, it's unhidden. There's um, no protection. Um, users can actually check and verify if there are missing values or there are erroneous calculations. And um, yeah, OK. Now that's it for the uh, for the summary of the results. Let me go through some of the other uh, sheets here that we haven't gone through yet. Now this one, if you go to the last sheet, this is the BRT standard that I mentioned about earlier. It gives a brief introduction of what the BRT standard is and uh, how the metrics were taken into account and how they were, um, how the scores were actually uh, computed for for each of the categories based on ITDP. Other black sheets I have mentioned earlier. Impacts, color coding. Again, if you want some guidance on color coding, go to this sheet. Okay. And uh, let's go to the home page. And uh, that concludes the demo for the full model of the team BRT model. Thank you very much. <laughs>